Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of the Switch It Up Show. It's been a while, but we are back in style. My name is Glenn, and I am joined by my wonderful co-host, Mr. Seth Trav. Our friend Glenn, how the heck are you, my guy? It's so good to hear from you. I want to know all the things that you want to do today on the Nintendo Switch. Uh Lay them on me, brother. We got so many types of things to talk about, Mr. Trav. Um, You know what? I'm going to switch it up. Because I was going to review one game, but then I'm going to change my mind on the fly. I'm going to do a different one, and you're going to have to find out what it is after we finish to these sweet, sweet tunes. Gucci, ladies and gentlemen. If you haven't heard, be sure to give them a listen. Check the links over in the show notes so you can find all of their awesome music. Such a great time. Gets you ready. Sets the stage. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Trav? Incredibly and indubitably. Hmm. Some, some fancy words from you today. So, speaking of fancy, we're going to take it down a few pegs uh, with this game that I played. Now, I played this game on the PlayStation. So, I played it on the PS5, where it is currently on sale for $3.49, and the game in question is Gut Whale. It's also on the Nintendo eShop. It's $4.99 on the eShop, so you're paying a little bit of that premium. If you want it on Nintendo Switch, $4.99. You want it on PS4, PS5, it's going to be $3.49. So, save yourself a little bit of that hard-earned coin. And speaking of coin, you are going to get 25 golden coins when you purchase it on the eShop. Now, I'm going to hit you with the description that is on the eShop. It's the same game, but for some reason, the descriptions over in the PlayStation Store are really just not up to par. They're like four or five sentences, it seems like, for some of these games, and they just do a much better job of describing it over on the eShop. So, without further ado, reuse your ammunition to escape. Gut Whale is a infinite action roguelike taking place in the belly of a beast. Mastering the challenges of this game will involve managing the space between you and your ammo while fighting your way through a digestive system. Descend deep into the gut, keep your ammo close, unlock weird hats, and get crushed by a van. Levels are randomly generated and the final challenge mode can be played forever. It features three areas with unique enemies, a game change, different game changing hats to unlock. Beating the game is the only the beginning of the end, they say, because it keeps going, and high score endless mode. This game is a action platformer, uh, features the language of Japanese, French, German, English, and Spanish from our wonderful friends over at Retaliaka Games. Uh, this is, I feel like this is one of those games that you kind of love to hate. It's got a very, very good addictive feel to it. And it's like right on the edge of being too, like just being just a little too hard. They like, they just step right on that line. I don't fully go over it because I never really felt like I was overwhelmed. But this is one of those randomly generating, what is it, procedural generating games. They're everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, everywhere. Michelle Rogue Branch light, levels Rogue of light. everywhere. Mm-hmm. That, that mm-hmm. was good. That was good. You should be laughing at that more. Trap. <laughs> I thought it was I, I, I'm not having a good time. I'm going to laugh about that to myself while you're doing your game. But uh, this uses like these different... It's very it's very pixel art. Uh, so this looks like a little bit below 8-bit in terms of its graphical style. And you are going through the digestive system of this, uh, of this whale. So the screen itself is kind of flanked by like... I mean, very dark red blood, which I guess is supposed to be the innards of the whale. And then you are working your way down. And as you are on each different level, there are a few different enemies that you have to dispose of. They can't touch you. If they touch you, you die. Um, And you get a a couple lives. And then after that, once you lose those lives, it starts over and it goes again and it goes again. And you're fighting your way down. And as you continue to go down, it gets harder and harder and harder. Um, But... That being said, it doesn't get, like I said, so hard that it feels overwhelming or unfair or anything like that. And you can get different types of weapons, and there's different types of powers that you can get that'll maybe, um, you know, you can you can maybe shoot a little bit faster. Some of them actually let you take a move back, um, which is pretty cool, because if you die, you can hit it real quick, and it's almost like a rewind, uh, which is really neat, because you only get a couple lives. So, uh, and if you get touched, it, that, that's it. 
So these enemies are kind of moving all around the screen and you're trying to jump yourself around them, navigate the different environments, shoot them real quick uh, because if they touch you or if they attack you, that's it. And then you have to start over again. Uh, so I don't know. I, I didn't play Dark Souls. I know you were into the super Dark Souls of where you, you're dead, you're dead. Demons. Demons. I'm into the Demon Souls. Demon Souls. Uh, is dark, what is Dark Souls? In... I just make that up. Dark Souls I actually just got. There's three <laughs> okay, of them. Okay. Uh, it's the sort of not officially, but it is the sequel to Demon Souls. All right, all right. I was in the I was in the, the Bloodborne, ecosystem. Same vein. Yeah. Uh, uh, Soulsborne games they call them. Oh, okay. All right. It's like Neo, Neo Two. I feel like there's not that much at stake in this game, but like you know, when you die, you die, and you have to start back over again. So as rewarding as it is to complete different levels and continue to move on, like the stakes are rising. Like you know, you're just getting more and more nervous, and the levels are getting harder. Uh, but it's fun. Uh, like I said, it it doesn't it doesn't get so not fun because of the difficulty. I feel like it was challenging. The thing, but then again, it is infinite. So I'm sure once you get to a certain point, it kind of will probably. Uh, make you go crazy but that being said for four dollars and 99 cents on the nintendo eShop, or for three dollars and 49 cents on the ps4 or ps5 i feel like you can do a lot worse if you're into procedurally generating games or like those final death type games or you like like arcade like shooters and you want to try something different this is certainly different so i'm going to go ahead and give gut whale on the ps4 ps5 and nintendo switch a 3.75 out of 5 3.75 wow yeah being very specific because that's the type of guy i am mr trav rare with those specificities hey you know what you know yeah. sometimes that you level have to. of breakdown at our star rating uh, you're, you're welcome you're or welcome coin rating i preach obviously <laughs> and that's the network you're on ladies and gentlemen the preach network be sure to check out all of our great shows that we have including tales from the crib it came from cherry hill and the og itself the preach cast we've got our own feeds for all of them and we're playing them for you. Just like I was playing Sun Wukong versus Robot. I did it on the PS5, but I am reading the review from the Nintendo Switch, which you can currently purchase it at $4.99, and you get 25 gold coins when you make that purchase digitally on the Nintendo Switch. Battle robots in this mega mini Metroidvanian. Get ready to run, jump, fight, and explore. Sun Wukong vs. Robot is a mini retro pixel Metroidvanian game inspired by old school classics. Sun Wukong has awakened. Our hero appears at the center of a mechanical maze and is holding the weapon from his legends. However, he is imprisoned by a mind locker that has been put on his head to regain his freedom. Wukong must defeat the four robots. It features classic platform mechanics, unlock abilities using experience points, three upgradable skills, and side-scrolling maze with many rooms. It is from our good friends at Retaliac Games and by the fine people at Bitka and Indie Nova. It is also available on PS4, PS5, Steam, and possibly the Xbox. I apologize, anyone listening, I don't get down with the box anymore the red ring of death was enough for me ladies and gentlemen so sun wukong versus robot to start off i do believe that this this game is based off of the same story that akiri toriyama based dragon ball z off of he had goku run around with the tail which i believe is based off of this old chinese proverb of sun wukong or or perhaps it's japanese again i apologize for not knowing the specificities of that uh the game itself feels like the original metroid or castlevania if it had a darker palette and wasn't necessarily as well defined the the gameplay is very similar to those games you go through the different levels you the different areas to the one major world that you're in you explore you return back with your power-ups and you see if you can open up those other doors you can also choose to upgrade other powers things like that however the way the game works you don't really necessarily need to upgrade a lot of your power-ups. It's almost like Hollow Knight in that way, another classic Metroidvanian at this point. It it really does give you a lot of those amazing side-scrolling Metroidvanian platformer feels. But the game has a lot of, of tiny hang-ups that I think hinder its experience overall. The, the storyline is 
decent and the artwork that they give you for the pseudo cutscenes that you have are very good and i think it it looks a lot better than the sort of 8 bit or lower quality that the regular game plays at one of the biggest drawbacks that i had with this game was that it the music is very inconsistent the music is very very inconsistent at points i thought that i had somehow muted my tv because it seemed like the track just cut out and ended it almost seemed like a glitch was happening because I'm in a major part or hub of the overall world and there's no music. I don't know what that's about. Usually I'd have a little backing track. We have played other Metroidvanians that have had the backing track, at least when you're walking around. This unfortunately didn't have that. And it was it was oddly noticeable for me again to a point where I thought maybe the game had glitched out. The game doesn't have a lot of glitches or many that I noticed. There was some weird interesting issues but i think that those would be the standard cheeses that you would be able to apply to any boss in a metroidvanian and that's good it's good that it has that i want to have those classic elements the boss fights and the areas they are unique and they are interesting the boss fights were actually really fun and i i was surprised at how fun I thought they were. And I was also surprised at the fact that they did change up the music for the bosses and the bosses were given an extra breadth of life because they were given such a better quality or experience. Overall, though, that's sort of the vibe the entire game gives you. You're going to run into a lot of the same sort of enemy types and you're going to have to attack a lot of the same sort of things up until you get to those boss points and you can unlock other power-ups or parts to this mind vice that you have on your head it is cool when you beat those bosses though because again you're going to see a neat little sort of more pixel art style of a cutscene, and you just have fun with it uh overall the game is fairly short i feel like this is a good game to purchase and beat on a road trip i feel like you would be able to beat it in possibly a drive from philly to pittsburgh uh depending on how fast you want to go through it um overall though it it is again it feels that parts of it are underdeveloped and they could use more loving, more, more of a polish. Because to me, I feel like a game, even if you're trying to make it like Castlevania or Metroid from the Nintendo, it should be a little better than those in presentation, if only because the technology is so much more advanced now and you're running it on, on better systems. And you also have, you know, the framework of the original Castlevania and Metroid. It, you know, it's that fine line that you you dance in reviewing games sometimes. Um, the price point, I think it's right where you want it to be, especially for a game like this. And I definitely can't tell you not to pick it up. I can tell you maybe there are better $5 buys. So because of that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give Sun Wukong versus Robot a 3.5 out of 5. You couldn't possibly give the 3.75 out of 5, huh? It wasn't quite on that level. It had to be stuck at the 3.5. Is that correct? It is correct. And that's because the game is shorter. And I I truly feel that that music cutting out was a big drawback, as well as other minor frustrations with just jumping around level usage and then varying and how difficult or not difficult it is hey my man each and every game is different and to each their own and that is the beauty of games on the nintendo switch that is the beauty of the show because if things ever get boring you can always switch it up